introduce into boxes and firstly in the blue corner wearing the white trunks to be blue and red he hails from jamaica originally now uh, Fight professional is Orwell Mackenzie, and across the ring in the red corner, wearing the white and black trunks, he's from Burnley. Ladies and gentlemen, he enters the ring tonight as the current British Cruiserweight Champion, John Lewis Dickinson. The officials appointed for this contest by the British Boxing Board of Control. The judges scoring the contest, Mr. Phil Edwards, Mr. Steve Gray and Mr. Dave Paris. The timekeeper is Mr. Jim Holborn Jr. and the referee in charge of the action that will now give his instructions to both boxers is uh, Mr. Victor Lockwood of Paisley in Scotland. Hey boys. All right guys, you've had your instructions in the dress room. Remember, obey my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. God bless. Touch gloves. Twelve three-minute rounds for the British and Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship. This is going to be a good fight. And sitting at ringside, just behind John Lewis Dickinson over there, you might see in a moment or two, Big Glenn McCrory, my old mate, 25 years ago that he won his world title, beating Patrick Lumumba. June the 3rd, 1989. Where's quarter of a century gone? <laughs> I remember watching that. Over McKenzie, always so dangerous in the early stages. He's had 10 wins in the first three rounds. Good little right hand at the body there from McKenzie. Just threw a nice little jab up, upstairs and then whipped that right hand down low. And he has got a very long reach, McKenzie. Still stands about, what, six foot one thereabouts, so significantly shorter than Dickinson, but he's got the reach. And that right which went into the body thrown seemingly from range and again that illustrates that very clearly won his commonwealth title knocking out tony conquest in five rounds in april and he started fast here mckenzie yeah, he has there just had to take a little right hand himself there off dickinson dickinson keeps his hands up nice and high nice and tight but a good positive start most definitely there from over mckenzie John's brother Travis carried the uh, belt into the ring. He was the guy who was giving him a, a hug before the fight began. What a fight that was against Matty Clarkson. So See that one? Yeah, it was tremendous. Both, both guys were tremendous. Obviously, Travis getting the win and deservedly so, but what a great fight. Got off the canvas four times before stopping Clarkson in the sixth. They used to have quite a feisty relationship when they were young lads, apparently. John says he became a bit nicer to him when he when he bought a car and he realised he could get a few lifts. <laughs> I got a brother just like that. Again with that right hand of the body there from Oval, but he always throws a jab first before he to try and disguise it with the jab. Tentative sort of opening from Dickinson, but this is what Tony Bellew did really in the second time that he fought Mackenzie. Just kept the defence tight. And just boxed him. Yeah, you know, he, he's gonna he's giving away the round or or well, Oval's come up and taken the round, this way I get it right. But you have to can't give it over any 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 chances, especially in the early rounds when he's sharper. He's at his most sharper, so you've got to keep very compact, very tight. Mackenzie's been an avoided man to some extent over his career. Not a big ticket seller, never has been, but he well, you can see the way he's loading up here. One of those lands clean on the whiskers. He's very capable, particularly in the opening rounds, of just putting a man away with one shot. He's one of those horrible danger men, isn't he? You know, you feel you can outbox him maybe at times, but 
He, he's a better boxer than you give him credit for, but if he lands as well, it's good night. Mickey Duff uh, used to call him the, uh, the Who Needs Him yeah. Society, didn't he? Used to say he's a fully paid up member of the Who Needs Him Society. Good round, though, for Oville. Yeah, good And start. one in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good positive start. He came up with intent, didn't he? Threw plenty of punches and landed with plenty of shots. Mm. Yeah, put it here, mate. Put it back here, mate. Just put it out. Oh, well. Oh, I'm happy with that. You've got your chest, isn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you're right over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good opening round, doesn't it, for Mackenzie? Yeah, again, a good right hand to the body, but he threw, the, like I say, he threw the jab first, threw it up, stuck it right in the face of, of Dickinson, then giving him a free shot to the body, and again, landed a nice little combination. But Dickinson kept his shape. Didn't get flustered, didn't try and fire back with Mackenzie, that's important. You don't want to fire back with Mackenzie, you either fire first or, or react or try and counter never fire with him he's too dangerous to do that good couple of jabs there from Mackenzie just out jabbing Dickinson and again using that long reach as ever Mackenzie well Dickinson doesn't look in bad shape but Mackenzie absolutely chiseled isn't he yeah he's like a rock isn't he couple of solid body shots already Dickinson has felt the physical strength of Mackenzie right hand going around the back of the head and Victor Lochran the Scottish referee quite rightly is pulling him up for that good jab there from Mackenzie and follow it through the right hand to the body yet again And even though Dickinson's keeping his shape well, keeping his hands up nice and high, gotta be careful he doesn't just crawl into too much of a shell. In a minute, he's gonna have to try and start working his own jab. Fight fraternity here in force. Billy Hardy commentating just behind me for Radio Tees. Dave Garside, he was a good heavyweight sitting alongside the promoter, Dennis Hobson. Jackie Charlton sometimes shows up at these events, not seen him yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if he turned up. Loves his boxing, big Jackie. It's better from, from Dickinson, nice jab. Yeah, good, and a good right hand over the top, and he needed that, needed to get a little bit of a little bit of success at the moment, it's still been all over Mackenzie. Just needs to get a foothold in the fight, Dickinson, doesn't he? His fans, and there's plenty of them here. We're a bit quiet at the moment, a bit subdued. Well, he's not got to take, he's right not to take any risks, but to be fair, to Mackenzie's credit, he's come out and put it right on, on Dickinson, and forced Dickinson into his shell. Nice little one-two there, though, from Dickinson in response to a lazy jab from Mackenzie. It is a fact which Oville doesn't like very much, but he's never won a fight which has gone beyond six rounds, and I think he's probably... Just not going as flat out and as gung ho yeah. as he sometimes has in the past. Everything's a lot on the line here tonight, and he doesn't need to be running out of gas. But he still needs to keep Dickinson in his shell. He doesn't want to give Dickinson any more success to work, to build on, to work on. Oh, lovely! Oh, he's put him down with a right hand. Right hand. Is he going to get up? Well, he looks very, very unsteady. He's still all over the place. It's all over. It is all over, and Oville Mackenzie, this unlikely story goes on and on. Commonwealth champion, and now British champion as well. Well, 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 well. It's a Cinderella story, isn't it? And what a great shot. Um, two cracking shots. A right hand and a left hook to follow, and really, they were both heavy shots, and Dickinson could have done without one of them. To Dickinson credit, he done well to get up. But he was instead, he tried to find his feet. 
and the referee was right. Could have given, the referee could have given him a minute's rest in his corner, but I think the referee was right. Dickinson was all over the place. And... Well, Dickinson's taking it like a true sportsman, and that's good to see. And he's uh, just encouraging his fans to give the guy the credit he deserves. That's yeah, nice yeah, to see. Yeah, that's really good. We're going to see it all Oh, it's a left hook and then a right hand on the I top. Think, of, I think, I think the right front. hand did the right hand catch him on the temple. Let's have a look again. There's a left. Yeah, oh. the, well, the left hook's on the temple. The right hand's there, just on the on the chin there. But he, yeah. the left hook shook him up really bad, and the right hand just helped him on his way. Good shots. Just, you know, I think his senses are there, but his legs portrayed him more than anything else. I think he he was he was understanding what was going on. It's just his legs wouldn't 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 listen to him. Victor Lockeren gave him every chance, and as he went back to the corner, you saw the little stagger. Yeah. He just he, he leads him back to the corner. He's getting up here. He's up. He's okay. But as he went back to the corner, there was just a little stagger, and it was then that Victor Lockeren, quite rightly, said, "No, no, no, that's it." And even oh, Mackenzie Box excellent. Come out, put it right on Dickerson straight away, like he should have done. He done well. Dickerson, to his credit, kept his hands, kept his shape very well. Didn't give away too many gaps. And you've got to give Mackenzie credit for that, for finding the gaps in that tight defence. Matty Askin sitting at ringside, he'd like a, a oh, chance to just... fight the winner. He'll be, he's there with Paul Speak, fights out of the uh, Ricky Hatton camp, and he'll want a, a crack at Oval Mackenzie. I am absolutely sure that you're not going to be able to st stop Oval delivering that trademark smile. And when we hear from him a little bit later on, he is going to have some very very happy words I'm sure here now though is Mike Goodall ladies and gentlemen after three minutes and nine seconds of round two the referee Victor Lockman has stopped the contest John Lewis Dickinson in no position to defend himself leaving the winner and still cruiserweight champion of the Commonwealth and the new British cruiserweight champion Orville Mackenzie! So that's win number 11 inside three rounds. He is a, a lovely story. He came from a tough background, tough upbringing in Jamaica. He used to sell fruit for a living as a kid. Came over here to earn his way as a fighter. He's had ups and downs, but he's never lost his self belief. And now he has that Lonsdale belt, and he is one very, very happy boy. I tell you what, the three men in suits didn't have a clue there, did they? I mean, they got to put a belt around his waist. It was the kind of ending that we like from Oville McKenzie. I thought they were both. I actually thought they were both being cautious, Duke. To be honest, I thought Oville was a bit more cautious than usual. But I thought they were a little bit close, and I'm not surprised he got caught. It looked like at the beginning of the fight, I mean, obviously, obviously started just marginally quicker. Yeah. But he was boxing a much more tactical fight. Mm -hmm. He was coming out using the jab, he was throwing a lovely right hand to the body with that left hook, and that was the shot which done the damage. And Dickinson, Dickinson he looked timid and, and quite, not scared, but he was just, he was being more cautious. cautious. He was cautious because he was afraid of the power. He came up with his hands up, rightly so, chin down, but he wasn't and he's letting his hands go. He wasn't you, being active you enough. Need, if, you know, if you're against a banger, Duke, right, and you, you know, you've fought plenty of them, you know, you boxed your way past them, boxed their ears off. Yeah. But you've got to keep moving, you've got to keep working. You have to. You can't just stand with your hands no. up, you've got to hit them with jabs, you've he got to make just, them think. He was standing directly in front of him, Steve. There was no lateral movement. Mm. And what he should have been, or trying to at least try to do, was just faint with the jab, pour with the jab a little yeah, bit, just to gain your confidence. Hit, you know, even if you're hitting thin air, as long as the arms are moving, that's fine because you're getting your confidence. But he wasn't even doing that. Were you a bit surprised by the ending, Steve? I know we should have never surprised. surprised by I, mean, I, I thought in the last fight, did Dickinson not wait a bit for Dawson to blow himself out? Mm. Was he not going with the same mindset? But no, you can never be surprised when Oville finishes a fight from, from nothing because. Although he, he'd been winning the fight, there was no sign of that was to come. I mean, he said it would be a right hand that would finish it in the interview. There I was mean, a left, I think, that... See, if you actually look damage. at that, when, he, when Oville delivers the first left hook, his feet are inside John Lewis Dickinson's feet. I'm not sure John Lewis Dickinson should, should have been that close, Duke. No, but... And he what, hasn't backed him up, he's centre of the ring. He's absolutely centre of the ring, Steve, but all he was doing was just standing there. Yeah. He had his hands up, but he, as you can look. see, he's just standing there. There's no movement from him. And if you're going to stand in front of all of them, all of them Mackenzie, as we said earlier, yeah. you're going to get nailed. It's as simple yeah. as that. 